So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Neil Gampa, and uh, this is Davide. So <laughs> we're here in, in somewhat in, in, in physical sense and maybe mostly in the spiritual sense uh, to, to talk to you about the CentOS Hyperscale SIG uh, with our uh, some periodic update period. Yes. So for this, we're going to have a, uh, for our agenda, we'll have a little bit of a recap. We'll talk about some of the deliverables and recent work that we've done and the stuff that we're working towards. And so you want to Sure, I can do the intro. Um, so the Hyperscale SIG uh, was started a few years ago at this point uh, with the idea of having a SIG focused around CentOS stream to provide a venue for folks working around large scale infrastructure to combine forces and work together and try to get a lot of the work that organizations and people tend to do in house, get it done out in the open and collaborating. So the idea is to foster collaboration, both around tooling and around processes, around packaging, in general, trying to make life easier for people. Um, this is open to anybody interested in working in this space. While there are large companies involved, by all means, this is not restricted to large companies. I'm certainly not a large company. <laughs> yes. Uh, this was established, as I said, a few years ago. We started with six people. We now have 34 people, uh, which is a lot. Um, not all of these 34 people are active uh, for what is worth. Uh, we will probably start like proning their roles sometime later this year. Um, these days, we hang out on Matrix in CentOS Hyperscale uh, on the Fedora Matrix server. Uh, so if you want to talk to us, uh, most of us are US-based, uh, but generally speaking, people are around if you want to ask questions. There's bi-weekly meetings, you're welcome to join, uh, also on Matrix. Uh, the meeting minutes are mostly up there when I remember to put them up. <laughs> uh, we also do a monthly social on Zoom, uh, which has been great for people to hang out and like, it's a mix of getting actual work done and shit posting, so it, it works pretty well for that. I personally think the balance of shit posting is, yeah. is, is much yeah. better than you would it, expect. It works well. And, and we have meetups. So we did a meetup this morning, which was really fun. Uh, We've done another one at Connect last year. Uh, we will see if we can do another in-person meetup uh, in the US, maybe later this year, if there's a suitable event to do it at. Uh, but otherwise, we will definitely have another one of these at Connect next year. And uh, well, this is the slide of links. Uh, you can find links to our charter, documentation, the activity reports, which are the things that end up on the blog that occasionally get picked up by press. Uh, oh. That you find the last one we wrote on blog.centos.org uh, a few days ago. Yes. <laughs> uh, a recap of all the conference talks we've given, uh, including this one once we finish it, and the tracker uh, where we do some modicum of product management. All right. Right. You go. Right, so for our, uh, for our scope here, um, these day, what we're trying to do here is provide backports that typically are done inside of companies to support CentOS deployments at scale. Because as it turns out, in the real world, uh, sometimes what it gives you is either A, not enough, or not soon enough. And so we try to handle a little bit of both of those there. Um, we have co policy and configuration alternatives because, you know, Everyone's got a little different story to handle how they want their deployments, and of course, large-scale testing, hence hyperscale, or something like that, I don't know. We have our own kernel, and uh, more recently, and we've got um, you know live DVDs and stuff, and we'll talk a little bit about all these as we roll through them. So the first thing is package backports. So these are the things that um, we are overlaying updated versions of stuff that exists within the main uh, CentOS stream uh, repositories. So these are delivered in the hyperscale main repository. You can see the fancy command to install that. These are drop-in replacements. Don't file bugs in, 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 rel, in Red Hat 1 Jira or in the Red Hat Bugzilla. File them here, please. Don't, don't confuse other people. Um, they are built against CentOS Stream and Apple. All hyperscale content requires extra packages for enterprise Linux. Uh, we build for x86 and ARM. There is probably very little reason for us to ever explore the other architectures, but if you're super interested, come and talk to us and we'll maybe work something out. We have the ability to build for other architectures. We do not have the ability to test because none of us uses them. But if right. you're really into Power or S390 or whatever, if you by want all a means. If you want hyperscale mainframes, then come and talk to yeah. us. Um, we recently added, I think, like Linux firmware, it was CLI2. Um, and some other there's random a lot of, There's a lot of packages. Yeah, there's a lot of little random packages, but 
think the most notable one is AWS CLI 2 and, and Linux firmware, and there's a little bit of a discussion point about that later. Um, there's, I think, Davida, you're working on there the is, thing. There is working progress on OpenSSH. Uh, this is coming from Meta, where at Meta we have a long-standing internal build of OpenSSH, which has a bunch of patches on top of it, some more questionable than others. And as part of the effort of getting some of these upstreamed, we, are, we have moved the packaging at least out in the open. So uh, this isn't built uh, for the like public tag, mostly because I don't think anybody w should use it in the current state. Uh, but it is there and the sources are there. So if you're curious, you can find it and you can look at the packages. And you can you can build it if you want, but you probably shouldn't. If you're a masochist, um, you could go uh, and look at it. The, we also, there's also a chemo build I've been working on and off um, with the goal of, again, trying to get some of the work we do internally around virtualization out in the open. Uh, this is published. Um, it's, I don't think it's tagged for release. It's only tagged in testing. Um, primarily because it has seen very limited testing. Um, but if it's something you're interested in, uh, we have some good discussion this morning as well around this. Um, it is a space where we would like to try to get more stuff out. Right. Um, also on the packaging front, uh, we have automation that tracks uh, the, the MTTT bus and uh, files issues whenever one of our packages gets shadowed by a package upstream so we can update it or untag it as needed. This has been quite useful because uh, sometimes Oftentimes, the, the outcome of this is that we just kill our backboard, and then it's one thing less that we have to support, but sometimes it requires rebasing. Um, we might need to check that this keeps working now that there aren't pushes happening to the sendos.org anymore. Yeah, we're definitely going to. Uh, I was thinking that now. Yeah, we, um, oh, I, we should have thought about that this morning. <laughs> uh, we should look at the webhook thing that Alexander was talking yeah, about, because I yeah. think that will That, that will probably will help fix here, that. Yeah. And it should be an easy thing. This runs on OpenShift. Um, at some point, we talked about hooking this up to something that would do maybe automated rebuilds, um, kind of like the release monitoring stuff works in Fedora, mm -hmm. um, but someone needs to build it. Uh, I, you want to do system D or I can do system D? You do system D, sure, that's your whatever. thing. Um, one of the packages we have as a backport is system D. Uh, we try to generally ship the latest system D upstream. Currently we ship 2.5.3. Uh, we will soon, uh, we're talking this morning, we'll probably do 2.5.5 next. Um, Dan is there and he does most of the work on this. Uh, this is built for stream 8 and stream 9, though we probably won't build it for 8 anymore because 8 is nearing end of life anyway. Yeah, we announced that on, um, on the blog post that yep. we're building that for 8. It is uh, slightly different from the stock system that you might get in CentOS or URL. Uh, it has, uh, in my opinion, more sensible defaults, like defaulting to C group 2. Uh, it ships a number of um, ancillary parts of system D that are disabled in the RHEL build. So it ships UMD, it ships Network D, it ships SOLD D. Um, Undi in particular is quite nice if you haven't used it. Uh, it does need PSI, so you might need to boot if you use the RHEL kernel, boot with PSI equal one. Um, at least definitely on eight, I forgot to tune that on nine too. Yeah, we need uh, to it also ships a bunch of improvement to the journal and to other components. Uh, this should work with SE Linux because we at least try to boot it in a VM, but none of us actually use SE Linux, so your mileage may vary there. We had a good discussion this morning on how to make SE Linux more supportable, so we, we hope to be able to make some progress there. Uh, but this is generally a stock systemd, so if you if you read the release notes for systemd, that's that's what you would get here. I run this at home on my home gateway, and it, it, the internet mostly stays up, so it should be reliable. <laughs> uh, we also run it in product meta everywhere, uh, but I mostly care about my home deployment. <laughs> uh, there's a there's a repo. Uh, are the sources still on Payer, or did we move them to get No, the sources done? are still there. They're still on Payer, right? Yeah. Okay, good. I got it right. So we have a repo with the sources, and they're mostly the, the sources of the system package, which whatever changes we might have on top. This tries to stay very close to the Fedora system packaging, and we, we usually try to get stuff there. The um, CICD pipeline uh, used to be handled um, with a bunch of, with a pile of shell scripts. Now it's been moved to GitLab pipelines, uh, and it is working significantly more reliable. Uh, there and that allows us to spot issues early on. What the, the CI does here is that every day we take the latest system D uh, from Git main of system D and we build it and we build RPMs and we run the tests. So that way we get signal early on if, oh, something changes system D upstream that will break in CentOS and we can either fix whatever is the problem in CentOS or in system D or sometimes in both. Um, we don't do we don't boot machines with this, so one Yet. thing we, we were talking and we would like to do is potentially end-to-end -end testing where we would say boot a machine we can feed it to OpenQA so we can actually check does it boot, does a Linux still work, and these kind of things. Um, this is surprisingly well documented, so if you're interested, there there's a page that explains how you can get involved. All right. 
Yeah, so we've also had um, some lovely contributions from Intel about having certain packages uh, backported, customized, something like that, where uh, they're, they have SSC2 and AVX and all the other fancy stuff that like inf makes, makes computers faster or something like that. And this included things like having customized and enhancements to glibc. Um, most of the stuff actually is dropping out of hyperscale and moving into CentOS stream itself. So over the next, I don't know, whatever, we'll probably have to reevaluate that tag and empty everything out. But this was recently accepted into Red Hat Enterprise Linux and all that stuff is just shifting out. The remaining stuff is actually being applied upstream in Fedora and will be coming down the pipeline for CentOS Stream 10. Uh, if if yeah. anyone knows what the hell that is yet. <laughs> this has been a great example I think of uh, uh, using Hyperscell as a space where somebody can like build build something and do do innovation and do work and then have this work feed directly into CentOS and making the project better. And we would definitely like to see more of that if possible in the future. Yeah, no, I'm always happy to see that kind of stuff. Yeah. All right, so for CentOS Stream 9, this was actually like a really big important part for, for us in hyperscale because uh, this was an opportunity for us to start from the beginning and evaluate the platform and contribute to it to make it better for us and everyone else. And so we, uh, well, we actually aimed for that from, the, from it and started doing things like we made systemd umd available to, to RHEL, RHEL 9 users through a systemd umd package with the defaults. They're not enabled by default or whatever, but they have them. Um, I added packaging macros for these things and Pipewire and Wire Plumber, you're welcome. Um, so Wayland support, all this other stuff. So there's, uh, there's, there's a, a lot of, list. this is not an exclusive list. This is not an exclusive list, but this is one of those things that um, with Stream 9, we took a deliberate focus towards every single thing that we do we think about can we push it to CentOS Stream Core first? And if that can work out, if there's a reasonable path towards that, we do that. Otherwise, we will put it somewhere else. Does it make sense in Apple? Does it make sense in, in the hyperscale content? And so on. And so I'm really proud of how well that that's actually worked out for us over the last couple of years. And this is something we intend to do again with Stream 10. Um, but of course, as, as Stream 10 is coming into, into existence and Stream 8 is falling out of existence, um, we are phasing out our CentOS Stream 8 stuff um, pretty much like now-ish. Yeah. So, and, and Commissar with all that stuff, you know, one of the other things that we do is the big large-scale testing yep. stuff. Um, this is more of a yeah, your show thing. Uh, one of the things we, so one of the things that Hyperscale provides is a place where we can deploy, uh, we can use a separate repo and a separate tag to deploy things that aren't quite ready for prime time that, but that are useful to test in a production context. So a good example here is the copy on bright work in RPM, uh, which is something that has been going on for several years at this point. I oh think we gosh. were Four slightly over, over optimistic in how, how easy it would be to get this upstream. Um, but it, it does exist and for what it was, it is running production at Meta and, and, it, and, and it works. It works. Um, but it's not yet in RPM upstream itself. And because this requires changes to have several components in the packaging stack, because there's patches to the repo RPM, DNF, uh, there's a plugin, there's a bunch of stuff. Uh, this isn't really the kind of thing that you can easily test by just installing a package. So it made sense to provide this in a repo. So if you want, um, you can enable that and it will upgrade the stack. Um, these, uh, the main benefit of this is that then if your root file system supports copy on write, uh, which means if your root file system is better FS or XFS, that we don't really test this that much with XFS, um, package operations are a lot faster and a lot less high intensive. Uh, there is a lot of documentation around and like design iterations of this that are linked there if you're interested. Um, Matteo, who is sitting there, is picking up the remainder of this work. So we will hopefully get um, further movement soon. Right, and so this comes to the second half of this kind of experimental fun stuff is the kernel. Um, so for the previous, uh, what do we call this, these status updates, we've talked about how CentOS Stream CentOS Hyperscale provides a stream kernel uh, based on the, the CentOS Stream 9 kernel that includes other enhancements that we have and some backports and stuff like that. Well, um, so that's changed. Uh, I've started shipping a kernel actually now based on Fedora's kernel. And a large part of this is because um, I don't wanna do any more backports. <laughs> As it turns out, backports are hard. If you wanna know a bigger, more in-depth and slightly painful description, of how backports in the kernel are hard, you should check out the talk that was done at DevConf CZ last year about 
how the RHEL team does their kernel back ports. I did a subset of that and it was not fun. Um, and I don't need to do, I don't need to have more pain in my life and so I have changed. And so we're, but more seriously, we're following this right now for two big reasons. The first is to qualify that ongoing newer versions of the kernel build properly on CentOS Stream 9 and are shippable for the CentOS target. It turns out it wasn't because nobody had tested for years. Uh, and so I fixed it. The other is that uh, it's a lot easier for us to take in, use newer features that we are, we're looking at. There's been an increasing amount of interest within the hyperscale SIG from Meta, from myself and others that want to use some of the newer capabilities that are coming in like SkedgeX and ButterFS's new enhancements and things like that. We wanna try this out on a larger scale and in a stable platform. And so that's where a lot of this is coming from. So, and the aforementioned experimental repo where the RPM cow stuff is in, that's where this is as well. The main reason it's still in experimental is we're still waiting on a secure boot certificate. And once we have that, then maybe we will see something change on that front. But hey, it's there and you can use it. And that kind of leads into, well, that's the To be clear, one. secure boot here is a problem for all the SIGs, not yeah, just for us. Yeah, it's not just us, it's everyone. Um, and you know, this also kind of leads into some of the collaboration work that we've done. Um, we have done some work around the surrounding infrastructure of the parts that we use to contribute that into um, the CentOS Stream 9 kernel. And I expect that this will continue with, with Arc and into CentOS Stream 10 as well. Um, I wrote a contribution guide to how to contribute to the RHEL 9 kernel. And we also worked with the KMOD SIG to try to support uh, KMOD ButterFS for as long as that was able to work. Um, we'll see if we can get that to be fixed again at some point. So that's published by the KMOD SIG for being able to work with Stream 9 and RHEL 9 targets generally. Um, so that one was a great example of like trying to like basically kill two birds with one stone on the same, on the same target path. Yep. And alongside that, we did a bunch of user space enhancements here. Um, so again, ButterFS is the big target here. Um, we backported the ButterFS progs from Fedora. We're currently at 6.7. For a long time, we were at like, I think 5.15, 5.16. Um, we have comp size. And then you know, I ripped through the installer and storage stack in, in RHEL and turned back on uh, the ButterFS support across all the components. And this is used for the hyperscale spin stuff, which we will talk about in a bit. Yep. Talk about KPatch. Um, we also ship a version of KPatch that actually works. Um, KPatch in RHEL, uh, is, is not super useful as it shipped unless you are getting your kernel patches from Red Hat or from some other vendor because the, the part that allows you to build your own kernel patches is neutered. Um, and we were interested, uh, this came from Meta in particular, we were interested in building our own kernel patches because we use KLP a lot for doing kernel deployments. Uh, so the version of KPatch that ships in hyperscale is the version that restores support for building. Uh, it also includes a bunch of additional optimizations because we do a lot of work with KPatch upstream. So it tends to track slightly ahead of the latest KPatch release. Uh, in particular, it has a lot of fixes included for Clang and Clang PG optimizations, uh, which are useful if you're doing kernel builds with Clang. Um, in general, I, if you haven't looked at kernel life patching and you have a sizable fleet, and you, this is something I would consider looking at. It's, it's a useful way uh, for doing kernel rollouts for bug fixes. Um, if you're interested, there was a, there were several talks at LPC, I think either this year or last year, there was a long talk that went in detail into how this works. LPC hasn't happened yet this year. No, last year. Yeah. I was thinking last year or the year prior. Yeah, you, you, you <laughs> figure it out. You can use Google. Um, we also ship container images, except I discovered last week as I was writing the blog post that they have been broken for 300 days because we have no monitoring and we are bad at using OpenShift. <laughs> Someone here is good at using OpenShift, we could use help. Um, otherwise, we'll probably end up moving this somewhere else because we are clearly not qualified to maintain this. Um, <laughs> but the idea is to have a thing that does builds and publish them to Quay. The ones that are on Quay now, for what is worth, they do work. They're and they do DNF broken, upgrade. We do test or that anything. Part. But yeah, if, if you use them, you may want to like do from the image DNF upgrade and then pack it up again just in case. Um, but we will get this sorted out. I just didn't get it done in time for the report. Mostly because we didn't know until. Yep. All right, so you know, uh, on top of all the other stuff that David and I just talked about over the kernel and collaboration and user space enhancements, there's a way for y'all to actually try it out, sort of. Um, so we have produced workstation spins, um, two of them, GNOME and KDE Plasma. We use the Kiwi image build tool, uh, you know, from our friends in the OpenSUSE community that make this, and we have this as a collaboration with the CentOS Alternative Image SIG. 
I think it's actually alternative images. I know you just called itself the alternate images SIG, Troy, and I am now confused which one is which. The AI SIG. <laughs> yeah, I'm not calling it that. <laughs> you called it the alternate images SIG, so now I'm like, I feel gaslit to myself. About, do I remember the right name or not? Um. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, so Troy said it's in f I have the right name. The other name is not right, but whatever. It doesn't. It's fine. The initials are correct, and I'm still not saying that out loud. As a, uh, so, but it's uh, so we provide live DVD images um, with the hyperscale repo and packages. This includes, for example, the RPM cow stuff. If you want to try that, as well as our new kernel and all the enhancements related to that. Um, you can download them. We've got the URL and a nice page and spin bugs tracker for us. Please don't report our spin bugs to his spin bugs because that, that's going to be very. <laughs> that will be confusing. Yes. It will be very confusing if you send alternate images spin bugs to hyperscale or vice versa. Just just don't do that. But it's also important that CentOS Stream 8 spins are being phased out. This really wasn't fun in the first place because I was building them on my laptop and we really didn't want to do that anymore. So they're not being built at all, and we have moved fully over to Stream 9 with this new infrastructure. They were also stored in some random S3 bucket, so. There was a lot of jank involved. The, these ones at least come from CBS and are like, it's a slightly more authoritative source. Yeah, um, and again, there are known issues. We're working on them, we're trying. But I'm very pleased to finally have yeah. these and we can start building these on a regular cadence. All right, coming up next, um, we had this slide for a while, but we are still we probably finally made working progress. on this. Yeah, uh, I deleted in, a bullet point. In particular, the, the cloud images are something that we should be able to do in reasonable short order, and now that we have a good pipeline for doing image builds. Um, the, the work on Kimu is slowly moving forward, and again, we had some good conversations this morning that I think will let us make some progress. And then we still have aspirational the idea of playing with battery first transactional updates, uh, though probably not in the short term. Yeah. Oh. All right. Oh, we, we added forgot. In, yes. We forgot that bullet point. Okay. So Michelle, uh, in the audience, you know, peanut gallery here, reminds us that uh, in fact there is one bullet point missing. We are starting work on backporting the latest uh, GNOME stack from Fedora to CentOS Stream under the hyperscale banner under CentOS hyperscale GNOME. Unlike the other hyperscale content that we have, this is actually intended to work on top of just regular uh, CentOS Stream and Apple. So this will be a complete stack backport and make things available similar to what we do with KDE Plasma under Apple uh, with the KDE SIG. Um, this is something that we're gonna start offering and you know, I, I believe both Altimages and, and Hyperscale will use it for our GNOME variants because we yep. like having a good GNOME, I think, maybe. Yes. We don't care. <laughs> 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 Peanut Gallery no. says we don't care, but I, I probably like KD. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, again, a bunch of links where you can find us, uh, the documentation website, uh, where to find us on Matrix, the Santos calendar, which hopefully is still the right link, uh, with information on our meetings. Oh, I uh, hope that's still right. And the issue track here, and you can always write to the mailing list. We, we read the mailing list and the mailing list still exists. And with that, We'll open it for questions. Do we have time? Uh, probably. Sean isn't waving, so. Yeah. He didn't throw any flags at us, so I guess. I, I was eyeing in that direction. <laughs> Down there. Yeah, there you go. All over on the edge and in the corner. Should we just make sure that you're standing over there just in time for him all the time? <laughs> <laughs> um. First of all, kudos. I think uh, you're leading a very successful SIG. Um, the cloud SIG uh, is aspiring to be as successful as you are. Um, so awesome job. My question is um, the RPMs. You're, you're using the CBS Koji instance to build those, right? Yep. Um, you touched on automation, and we're, we're struggling with that a little bit on the cloud si SIG side, um, since we don't have Packet and all of these goodies that we have for Fedora. So I think the RDO folks in, in the cloud sig, um, you use, what is it, uh, Garrett? Uh, oh God. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna <laughs> investigate that. For, we are not going to use Garrett. We are not doing that. Um, we, so there, there's a few options there. You could use Packet for what it's worth. Packet, packet, packet works up. fine. Uh, also for builds on CBS or for like triggering uh, um, downstream backwards or whatever? No, I think I need it's to not, 
I you'd have to do weird so things. So the, the hooking I added an there. RFE for that, and they were like, they're looking at the Santa Stream Koji instance first before they. Yeah. Want. So. Right. Right. Um, oh, so perfect. If, but uh, since that is isn't really there, well, what do you use currently for your packet build? My on? hands. So cur currently, we the builds themselves are not automated. There, we we kick them off manually with the CVS CLI. The system the builds uh, in the CI are automated, but the automation basically just runs the CVS CLI okay. uh, with a, um, and we have a service account, which with is an just embedded a fake, cert. it's a fake FAS account uh, called Hyperscale Bot. Um, I was, I was a member of setting the up something like that. Uh, okay. And that, that works fine. I wouldn't use that for real builds, but for like CI purposes, that's perfectly fine. I mean, it's, yeah, we, we have some high frequency um, repositories where we just need rebuilds all the time. And so longer term, and the reason I was asking before about the TMT stuff. Uh, uh, Davida, you got a weird prompt. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's work. That doesn't know how to do email. Sorry about that. Work definitely doesn't know. Cool. Um, I, I'll get back yeah. to you, and maybe we can share notes on on that. Yep. Um. Yeah. Uh, just a comment regarding the packet stuff. Uh, so maybe maybe depends what what do you need. Like if you need just the RPM builds, yeah, we, via Copper we support uh, stream and also testing farm. And uh, also we are integrated in image builders, so you can have like st stream stream image and layer some RPMs on top of that, but th that depends on the limitations of the, of the image builder instead of what, what, it, uh, what images they support. So kind of, yes, with the CBS, I think we've, we we discussed that with Christian that uh, we don't support the CBS Ko Koji now, but there is a strong demand, so we can we can start taking a look at that. That's that's the usual rule we are in packet trying to, to, to do. If there is a strong demand, we can take a look at that. One thing you can do now for what is worth is you can use the additional repos option in yeah. packet uh, if you need to build against your sick content, and that, that works fairly uh, well. Yeah, 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 you're right. And if you, um, you want to use TMT for doing stuff like the image builds things, I mean, that, that's what we're, we're yep. starting to do. We use TMT or FMF or whatever these words are. Um, we use we use these we use the things that I have to have an FMF folder for in in the pag in pag on pag your repos yes TMT yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and we use that to be able to do um, Kiwi image builds on every pull request for our repo so we have this configured now for the Fedora Kiwi descriptions we have them configured now for the Fedora Sahi remix descriptions I actually have something staged that I'm going to turn on very soon for the hyperscale descriptions. And I will probably do the same thing for the alt images descriptions because I like it when people send PRs and I can tell it immediately that they're yep. broken. <laughs> 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 because it is not fun to merge something and then find out like a week later that they don't work <laughs> and have no context for it. So I want to put Evgeny on the spot as well because he's the testing farm representative. Evgeny, say <laughs> hi. <laughs> and if you have questions regarding TMT, this is actually a good contact person. And so we have Packet and Testing Farm in the room, <laughs> just so you know. And I think back to your question about like whether the integration SIG should actually care about other SIG infrastructures. This uh, conversation right now uh, makes me feel like, yes, we should, and we should actually uh, discuss uh, automation for RPM packaging for SIGs in a more like generic sense, because it's, it's like a normal shared uh, interest yeah. which we all have, and we should learn how to do it as a, as a team. Yeah. yeah, I think at least coming up with best practices, um, that, would, that would definitely help. I mean, to give you an idea what the bulk of what I wind up having to do from packaging front is, I notice that, in fact, that my image builds are not including my builds of my packages anymore. Turns out they've been superseded. I have to go rebase them and then push them. I would, and that is very trivial, menial grunt work that I would very much like to not have to keep doing. <laughs> Any other questions? Cool. Thank you. Thank you.